Hello Year 11s and welcome to this video on the types and purposes of civil law. There are four things that you need to do while you're watching this video. The first thing is to take the very best Cornell notes that you can. The second thing is to use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function if you need to go over any information contained in this video. The third thing that you need to do is have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you can write into your vocabulary sheets the meanings of key terms or of any other words, the meaning of which you may be unfamiliar with. And the fourth thing that you need to do is have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through this video, I will give you some guidance as to what you should include in your summary books. Once you've finished watching this video, make sure that you read the pages from the textbook referred to on this slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that information. Well, let's get started then. This slide sets out the three learning intentions for this video. Make sure that you write these learning intentions down in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention is that you need to be able to define civil law. The second learning intention is that you need to be able to describe the different types of civil law. And the third learning intention is that you need to be able to explain the purposes of civil law. The first learning intention requires you to be able to define civil law. On this slide, I've set out a definition of civil law. Look down the left-hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term civil law and write this definition in there. Civil law defines the rights and responsibilities of individuals and regulates private disputes where one party's rights have been infringed, that is, where one party's rights have been breached. For these purposes, individuals includes not just people, but also groups, organisations and companies. The second learning intention requires you to be able to describe the different types of civil law. On this slide, I've set out a number of different types of civil law. One of the major types of civil law is breach of contract. This is where one party does not comply with, that is, breaches, an agreement that that party has with another party. Other major types of civil law are the torts of negligence, defamation, nuisance and trespass. Tort simply means a civil wrong. Negligence is where one party causes loss to another party by failing to exercise reasonable care. Defamation is where one party damages the reputation of another party by making untrue statements. Nuisance is where one party interferes with another party's enjoyment of their rights, for example, as where a factory emits pollution that prevents a neighbour from enjoying clean air. And trespass is where one party physically interferes with another party or their property, for example, as where a person goes onto another's land without permission, or destroys another's property, or injures another person. And finally, there is a whole range of other kinds of civil law, such as family law, wills and inheritance law, employment law, and equal opportunity law. The third learning intention requires you to be able to explain the purposes of civil law. As you can see from this slide, there are three purposes of civil law. The first purpose of civil law is to protect individual rights from being infringed, that is, from being breached. Examples of individual rights which are protected by civil law are contractual rights, the right not to be injured, and the right not to be defamed. The second purpose of civil law is to restore the party whose rights have been infringed, that is breached, to their original position. Civil law does this primarily through the payment of compensation, which is referred to as damages. And the third purpose of civil law is to achieve social cohesion. Civil law does this in two ways. First, it provides guidelines for acceptable behaviour, where these guidelines are intended to protect individuals from loss. For example, under civil law, a person must not act negligently. An employer must not discriminate against employees 
on the basis of their race, religion or sexual orientation. The second way in which civil law achieves social cohesion is by establishing bodies to resolve disputes or to assist the parties to a dispute to resolve that dispute. These bodies include courts, tribunals and complaints bodies. The next three slides set out three types of civil law and explain how each of those types of civil law achieve the purposes of civil law that we've just looked at. One type of civil law is breach of contract. If A breaches a contract with B, then A has infringed B's contractual rights. Civil law protects a party's contractual rights by prohibiting a person from breaching that party's contractual rights. In this case, if A does breach B's contractual rights, then A is required to restore B to B's original position by paying damages to B to compensate B for any loss that B has suffered. For example, if a builder, Bob, enters into a contract with Wendy to build Wendy a house by 30th of June 2019, and Bob does not finish the house by 30 June 2019, then Bob can be required to compensate Wendy for her losses. These losses might include the rent that Wendy is required to pay to live in another house until Wendy's house is finished. If Bob does not agree that he should compensate Wendy, or if Bob and Wendy cannot agree on the amount of that compensation, then Wendy can take their dispute to a court or some other kind of dispute resolution body, such as a tribunal, to decide the dispute for them. Another type of civil law is negligence. If A negligently injures B, then A has infringed B's right not to be injured. Civil law protects a party's right not to be injured by prohibiting a person from negligently injuring that party. In this case, if A does breach B's right not to be injured, then A is required to restore B to B's original position by paying damages to B to compensate B for any loss that B has suffered. For example, if Brimbank Council digs a hole in the footpath but does not put up a fence around the hole, and Max, who is walking home at night, falls into the hole and breaks his leg, then Brimbank Council can be required to compensate Max for his losses. These losses might include the medical bills that Max has to pay to get his leg fixed up, as well as the wages that Max is not paid because he can't work while his leg is being fixed up. If Brimbank Council does not agree that it should compensate Max, or if Brimbank Council and Max cannot agree on the amount of that compensation, then Max can take their dispute to a court to decide the dispute for them. A third type of civil law is defamation. If A defames B, then A has infringed B's right not to be defamed. Civil law protects a party's right not to be defamed by prohibiting a person from defaming that party. In this case, if A does breach B's right not to be defamed, then A is required to restore B to B's original position by paying damages to compensate B for any loss that B has suffered. For example, if Woman's Day magazine publishes a story in which it is said that Rebel Wilson is a liar, but it is not true that Rebel Wilson is a liar, then Woman's Day magazine can be required to compensate Rebel Wilson for her losses. These losses would include the damage that Rebel Wilson has suffered to her reputation by being called a liar. If Woman's Day magazine does not agree that it should compensate Rebel Wilson, or if Woman's Day magazine and Rebel Wilson cannot agree on the amount of that compensation, then Rebel Wilson can take their dispute to a court to decide the dispute for them. You can now include in your summary books a summary of the three purposes of civil law, together with an example of how a type of civil law can achieve these purposes. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. As a result of watching this video and taking notes on it, you should now be able to do three things. First, define civil law. Second, 
describe the different types of civil law, and third, explain the purposes of civil law. There's now one thing left for you to do. Read the pages from the textbook referred to on the first slide, and if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that additional information. Thank you for your attention.